Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. You already know what it is. Your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome to Dog in the Yard. Today is that yard talk with Tone Patron. Um, Tone Patron is from Brooklyn. Good friend of mine. Did 10 years for conspiracy, drug trafficking. And um, he's home. He did 10 years. Um, you know, we want to welcome him to the show. He's going to share his experience, his trials and tribulations with us and all that. So with all that being said, let's get right into the interview, man. My boy, you already know, Tone Patron. Brooklyn, stand up. Dog in the yard, yard talk. Let's get it. Hey man, I want to just take the time out to thank my guys up there, Jake and Ben, for doing an amazing job with this pen. This is that Dom CBD pen. These guys took their time doing this pen. It tastes great. They do them three different flavors, berry, mint, and mango. My favorite is berry, just to let you know, guys. You know, I know a lot of people out there dealing with pain, you know, dealing with anxiety, the way I deal with anxiety. And I'm telling you guys, it works for me. If you want to place your order today, you're more than welcome. You just hit up domecbd.co, punch in the code, dog in the yard, and you get your 15% off early. So for those people that's out there, that's going through it right now, and is stressed out in the house, that don't smoke marijuana, trust me, my brothers, this CBD pen does it all, man. Place your order today, man. It's your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard. You already know. When you're in that Tampa Bay area, make sure you reach out to my boy, Gus Torres, man. If you want anything that has to do with real estate, man, make sure you hit him up. You get the lowest prices and the finest houses, man. Trust me when I tell you. But don't forget to mention my name. You already know that Pistol P to get you that early discount. And that's my brother, man, Gus Torres. You already know, out in the Tampa Bay area. Make sure you hit him up, man. Sell, buy, invest, all that. Make sure you hit him up, man, because he focused with that out there. Tampa Bay, you already know, it's your boy Pistol, man. Get at me. <laughs> you already know what it is, your boy Pistol P. And when you're in that Boynton Beach area, make sure you see my boy, man. If you're trying to get lined up, shaped up, and you need that privacy, make sure you see my boy, man, at that Private Hair Studios, man, up in Boynton Beach, man. Gateway, man. And check out my boys up there, man. You know what I mean? They focus, man. My boy Herm, DJ, you know. They out there, you already know. It's super private, and it's exclusive. Most importantly, you already know it's your boy, Pistol Pete. Dog in the yard. <laughs> you already know what it is. Your boy, Pistol, Bronx legend. Today, I got my boy, better known as motherfucking Tony R. R. Ness. You know what I'm saying? And today, he's known as Tom Patron. You know what I'm saying? He did 10 years. He's from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Official, official guy, family. Let's welcome him to the show, man. You already know my nigga, Tom. What's up, Tom? All good, my brother. Thank you for having me. So man. what's up with you, man? How long you been home? I've been home now. Uh, January will be three years. So, okay. you know, a little over two and a half now. Okay, so let, let's go on, on, on that journey where, you know me, where what happened with, uh, you got you got you went to jail for, what, what happened? All right, so 07, I got caught up in a conspiracy ring, drug ring, you know, distribution, uh, interstate trafficking, you know, all, all the good stuff. You know, so you went to jail for conspiracy yeah. and drugs and stuff yeah. like that, and corrupt organization. You know how it is. You know, and then they tie you up with the conspiracy thing. Um, well, you may know, but maybe not your your viewers yeah. may not know. But um, yeah. So anytime you do something with someone else, anything that they do, you're also responsible for. Okay. So if I give a product to somebody and then they go ahead and distribute it. In Allentown, Reading, York, Philly, whatever. Now I'm responsible for all the laws that he broke in all of those counties and all those cities. Okay. So that's how that's how I got wrapped up into that. Okay. Right. And how much time you got? So what was the so situation? my sentence is is a it's a twenty year sentence. In Pennsylvania, you do you got a minimum and you got a maximum. Okay. So my minimum is ten and my maximum is twenty. So I did I did my ten, and now I'm doing the rest on parole. So you got basically, you did 10 years in prison, mm -hmm. and you're doing 10 years on parole. 10 years on parole, yep. So what was your experience like as far as going to Pennsylvania? I mean, because you're from Brooklyn. Right, right, right. Right, Sunset. 
right? Sunset so, Park, yep. Okay, so raised. so how you know you you know you would expect you know to get uh, to ever you ever get in trouble you know to go to the right. local prison, Rikers Island, right, or something. Right, so right, now right, here you go right. going to Pennsylvania. How was that like? And <clears throat> is that your first time in prison? Well, no, I mean you know. <clears throat> Basically, I mean, it was the the first bid. I mean, I've been to, to jail before. I've been to Rikers Island before. I've been to the tombs. Okay. You know, Brooklyn House. Like, you know, just little stuff, whatever, for like a week or two. Nothing nothing serious. Okay. But this is my this is my first conviction. This is my first time doing... Jail time. Yeah, a stretch. Or, okay. You know, a real time. Okay. So, um, I got locked up in New Jersey. That's where I got... That's where I initially got locked up at. Because um, that's where I would meet... You know, uh, my co-defendants. I would meet okay. them there, um, and I wound up getting extradited to Pennsylvania. And I didn't think that I can go to PA because I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't feel I broke any laws in Pennsylvania. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If somebody came to see me in New York or New Jersey and we did a business deal, then I would think I'm breaking the laws in the state that I'm in. Mm. But with conspiracy, like I said, you know, conspiracy can take you even. From where you're not Like like You know what I'm saying If you did something with somebody And they do it in another state And it happens to be with drugs Then you can get charged with that So When I went to PA I was just like They don't got a case on me You know Right I'm Like they, they can't do nothing to me Like right. You know I thought I was You know I thought I knew But Once I started speaking to the attorneys And looking at the laws You know I just was like damn So now I'm like damn I'm gonna do my time up here you know, my family's in New York, you know, this, it, you know, I don't really know anybody in Pennsylvania. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, like you do, you do time in New York, whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to run into people you know. Right. Because, you know, you from, you know, it's your home state. But, um, but you know, um, regardless, I, I knew the, the type of life that I was living and I knew that this could take me, this could take my freedom away. So. Right. So, so, prepared. so you went up there and then what happened? Did you go to trial or? So we were going to trial. We was going to trial because, you know, we all thought we had a strong case, but my case had like almost 30 co-defendants mm. because, you know, like, because of the conspiracy. So there was different levels. 30 co-defendants? Did you know all of them? No, no. I only knew like two people. Okay. So but you know, like, you know how they do it. You know, the main supplier, they had me as the main supplier. Then they had the organization. You okay. know what I mean? You know, they, you know, they had that little mafia chart. They got to the, the on rackets. Yeah, yeah. So so they had all these different people. You know, they have the the, the head of the organization. They have the lieutenants. Okay. This, this, you know what I mean? They had a, so the I breakdown. didn't know. Yeah. So I didn't know a lot of those people on there. But um, you know how it is. You know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So when we're ready to go to trial... Um, you know, the, the attorney is, the, all the attorneys are like, yo, um, your co-defendant is, you know, is going to talk against you. You know, mm -hmm. he's putting a, a statement against you guys. You know, so we were like, he was like, so you're in Pennsylvania. This is not New York. He's telling me, the, the attorney, like, you're facing, right now, they're offering 10 to 20. They're like, but if you go to trial and you blow, they're like, it's a good chance that you can get, they can run everything consecutive, separately. You know what Meaning I'm saying? like what? So, so the reason I got a 10 to 20 was because they, they, they ran a lot of things, uh, um, um, cons what the hell is, can't concurrent? They ran a concurrent, I couldn't right. even think about it right now. That's um, right. From, um, so concurrent, but consecutive, since I had like seven different charges, right, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They can go ahead and be like, all right, this one is a 10 to 20. This one's a 10 to 20. This is a 10 to 20. This, you know what I'm saying? Right. And we're going to run those separate, mm -hmm. and you're going to get like 70, <laughs> 70 years. Right. You know, now, he was like, you may not get that much, right. but you could get easily like 30. Mm. You know? Mm. So, you know, now I'm I contemplating like, do I want to go ahead and take the chance? And then, you know, when I got a, uh, one of my co-defendants, like, saying, like, yeah, he was the one that when was... When you got somebody telling on you. Yeah, so it's like, now, what you know, what do you do? Like, do you, you know, do you take the gamble? Right. And I'm like, so I, I didn't think I should take the gamble. So I was like, look, all right, forget it. I'm going to just take the 10 to 20. Right. You know? So you took, so you cop out the 10 to 20. Yeah. And then you did the 10 years where? I did it in PA, so... Um, I did it in a, a couple of different places, but my, the main jail that I did it at was this uh, uh, joint called um, SCI Dallas, uh, State Correctional Institution Dallas, which is um, in Dallas, Pennsylvania. Okay. You know, it's a small town. It's by, um, it's over there, like by the Pocono area. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I did most of my time there. That's where, that's where I came home from. 
And um, I mean that 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 jail was was. Just How was terrible. it? What was your experience there? Like when you first get in there, you from New York, you don't know nobody, you know. So you barely, so, barely. You, I mean, you didn't do no real time before. It's your right, first time right. doing ten years. You know how you felt. What was, was what was going through your mind and stuff. So like that. so this is what happened. So when I got when I got um when I got sentenced, you know, I was in a county uh, in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Uh, for for about six seven months until I went to court and, and you know I copped out. Then when I got shipped out, you know you got to go to the to the to the receiving jails, you know. Right. Um, so we had to go to Greaterford. Greaterford is a, is a state prison, but that's also a receiving jail. You go there when you know when you first when you first going through the system. So then from there, um, I went to Camp Hill, and Camp Hill is also a receiving jail. <clears throat> And they have a um, a section of that prison that's um that you're in blues. So anybody that's still waiting to be sent to their home jail, right? They'll be in blues. Okay. Okay. You'll be like in a blue like you know a button down like blue jeans and like right. whatever whatever um like s sneakers. Right. That right there, you could be there anywhere from a month to six months until they find you your jail. Hmm. But Camp Hill is also a penitentiary. So they have one side that's for the blues and one side for the browns. So okay. that means that, you know, you, 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 uh, you're doing time there if you're in the browns. Right. Those, three, those how many months was I there? I was there for, for, for two months. I was there for two months before I got sent, before I got turned to browns. But those two months, when you're in blues, they really, the COs give you the blues for real. Right. All right. So they they treat you so poorly so that they can kind of like keep you in check so that yes. when you go to whatever jail, you're like already like kind of like housebroken. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I get it. You know? So showers, for one, was cold. Showers was cold. <sighs> All right. That's first off. Then they tell you when to get out. So okay. how you, much time you get? So you literally get about two minutes in the shower. Yeah, they tell you soap on. You got to put your soap on when you're in, in. Then soap off. All right, out or get out, something like that. Right. If you still got soap on your hair, on your face, whatever, it don't matter. You got to come and you got to walk back to your cell like that, and your towel, and walk down the tier like that. Right. You know, and that's it. So I'm just giving you that as nah, an example wanna, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. You know, it's just crazy, you know, that people would like, be like, you know, fuck? people be like, yo, like, what's going on? But, you know, I adapted quick, you know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm a fast learner, so I'm like, all right, well, now I know, you know. So what, what I would do is, in the cell, a lot of times, I would just soap up, you know, and then when I, when I get over there, I can just rinse off, mm. you know what I mean? So that, you know, you start figuring out little things, you know, how to, how to adjust. But that part, I was there... For that part, um, that was like for about um, for about I think like like two weeks. Is that that specific part when when they treat you like that? Right. Then you but then you're in blues, and um, um, I wind up I wind up uh, being I wind up uh, staying at that prison. Okay. Yeah. So they were like um, they had asked me like Lopez, you you speak Spanish, whatever this and that, whatever. And my Spanish is trash though. But I was like, yeah. They were like, look, well they're looking for, um, for, for they were like they're looking for a translator. <laughs> I was say, yo, my is trash. No, it is, it yeah, is, yeah. it is. Um, but you said hell yeah, if it's gonna yeah, it's gonna keep me here. Yeah, no, no, because right, because I was gonna get moved over to to Browns mm -hmm. and Browns, you know, you doing time. So, but um, so they were like, yeah, they need um, they need a, a translator. Um, over in this building and they were like you know they pay good well not good but you know they give you the top pay which the top pay over there was 42 cents an hour 42 cents an 42 hour 42 cents an hour that was the top pay so that means a week you start out at 19 you start at 19 19 what? 19 cents you start out at 19 cents but top pay is 42 so you bring up you get paid every week? yeah yeah <laughs> you get paid every week so I think it was like I think like $30 or something like that Okay. I don't know. I can't even think about what it was right now. Right. But um, so that's fine. at least I see you have an idea. That's more or less. Yeah, yeah. So you know, but you know, if if you ain't if you ain't have no money coming in, at least you know you can get your cosmetics. You know, a couple yeah. soups, whatever. That'll help you out. You know what yeah, I'm saying? of course. You can do something. But um, so anyway, so they wind up keeping me at that prison right. at Camp Hill. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so the first the first week that I get switched to Browns, right? I go to 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 um to uh what was it? It was a uh, P block, I believe it was P block. I go to the block. They have two two different sides. They have one side for all for all kitchen workers. Right. And then they had another side for anybody that worked anywhere else in the jail. Okay? okay, so they had the kitchen workers separate because when they when they when they cracked open their gates and it was time for the kitchen line workers to go, everybody from that side can just go. You right. know what I'm saying? Instead of just opening this side and it, it'd be a mess. So so when I first got to the block, they had me on the kitchen side. But remember, I had a job working over at like a, a reception building as right. a translator and as a janitor. So after like two days of being there, they were like, Lopez, you got to move to B side because A side is only for kitchen workers. Right. I'm like, all right. So they moved me to, 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 B, to B pod. Now they moved me to B pod and now dude's cell that I was moving in to, he wasn't even in the cell. He was in the yard, right? So dude had, he had so much stuff like, because he was down already for like 15 years. So he had... Bunch the whole cell was just full with stuff. Keyboard, TV. I mean, he just has mad stuff, whatever. So I didn't really have nothing because I just came in. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just had my TV. Um, I just had, because you were allowed to buy a TV over there where I was at. Um, I had my TV and, you know, just my, my box, you right. know? A couple jumps and sweatsuits, whatever. That's it, you know? Right. Um, so when dude comes in, I could see dude is not happy. Like, damn, he got somebody in his cell. You know what I'm saying? You know, because he was rocking off by himself for a little while. But I'm like, look, you know, it is what it is. Like, I don't, I don't run the jail. You know what I'm saying? But, but he was, you know, we introduced each other, whatever. He's like, oh, where you from? Oh, Brooklyn. He's from Philly, whatever. Boricua dude, whatever. He was there, I think, for like, for like shooting a cop or something. Okay. All right. So that was like a Wednesday. Well, that was a Wednesday. Thursday, I go to work. You know, come back, whatever. Me and dude, you know, we don't speak, whatever. I don't know him. I'm not on no, you know, Joe yeah. Friendly stuff. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know how it is. You're just you keeping know? it cool. Yeah. Friday, I go to work. I come back. They're like, Lopez, um, you can't go in your cell right now. I'm like, this is the CEO telling me. I'm like, why? They're like, they're like, um, because the security's in there. I'm like, all right. So. I'm just waiting. They in there. They pack and do stuff up. They 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 send dude to the hole. Oh. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm only there on that tier for two days. I don't know what's going on. Right. You know? So um come to find out, um, dude had a cell phone. He had a cell phone and um and he was um having relations with the nurse over at the, you know, at, at the infirmary. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. He was smashing it or whatever he was doing, right? No way. So, so you know, so they, they packing his stuff up. Yeah, he's they gone. Pack, you know, that's it. They, they, you know, he's in the hole and they probably going to ship him out to jail or whatever. So I'm right. like, all right, so I'm just waiting. And they asking me, like I said, dude had mad stuff. Like, he'd been down a long time. He had mad sneakers, you know? Yeah. And they just kept on, they weren't going to give him everything because they were like, for one is, he got caught messing with one of their own. Right. So that's already, you know, a strike against him. Yeah, and he then violated plus, it. Yeah, and then plus he already, he had way too much stuff. You're only allowed to have but only a certain amount of things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Like two pairs of sneakers you're only supposed to have, whatever. He had probably like six pairs, you know? So they kept on trying to give me his stuff. Like, look, these sneakers, we're throwing them out. You might as well take them. I'm like, throw them out then. I'm not taking that man's stuff. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know him. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then the last thing I need is dude to be thinking like, oh, dude stole my sneakers or whatever. And then we right. run into each other somewhere else, whatever. Now it's, you know, I'm like, well, throw them out then. I'm like, I don't know him. Or give it to his friends or whatever, right. you know? So that was a Friday. So that was for like two hours. They searching the cell, taking everything out, whatever. Mm. There wasn't really much for me to do because I didn't have really much. I, I just came in, you know what I'm saying? And you can't really have a lot of stuff when you're in blues, you know? So I'm there over the weekend, you know, hooking the cell up now, you know, cleaning up everything. Making it your own. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, Sunday comes, security comes back to the cell on Sunday. And they're like, Lopez. I'm like, what's up? They're like, get dressed. I'm like, for what? They're like, you got to come with us. I'm like, all right. I get dressed, whatever. They come in, they cuff me. And I'm like, what's going on? They're like, um, you're under investigation. I'm like, investigation? I'm like, for what? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, 
So it just so happens because because of the cell phone that dude got caught with in the infirmary, they wanted to see if I had something to do with that. Right, if you was down with the <laughs> If whole I was shit. down with that, I'm like, like you could just look at the paperwork. I just came from the other, you know what I mean, from from blues. Yeah. Like I just got transferred over here. Like I, I don't even know this guy. You know I'm from New York. Like it was just crazy. So I wound up being in the hole for for like 40 days. For that. For that, yep. And I and I'm writing to counselors, you know what I mean, to yeah, different you, people yeah, like, yo, can like, somebody this? tell me what's going on? Right. You know, and they're like, oh, you're still being investigated, still being investigated, still being investigated. That's crazy. You know, um, so, damn. So then, you know, so then so now I'm was in the whole. And the whole meaning was for little people that don't know. Yeah. The so whole. the whole uh, is the RHU, the the restricted housing unit. So you know, in most holes, in most of the um, those type of uh, um, uh, units. You're usually by yourself in those units, mm-hmm. okay? So, bro, this RHU was so disgusting. All right, so the cell was literally half the size of this room right here. Half. With a bunk, the toilet, everything, right? They had a plastic... It was a, it was a gate, but they had plastic over the gate so that you won't spit or throw anything at the COs. Okay. All right. So now this was in June of 08. It was like a thousand degrees in there because now the plastic, um, the plexiglass that they had over the the, the bars, right. whatever, you can't get any air in. You know what I mean? So even if they had the window open, first of all, there was no AC, no nothing, no central air. This was an old, old prison. So there was none of that. Okay. But now with the window open... Mm-hmm. That you know, in the in the hallway, we're not getting any air in anyway because of the plexiglass that's over the doors. So that's one thing. Now, rats and water bugs, bro. Like, it was just it was just so disgusting. It was like hard to even get sleep in there. I remember sleeping like one of the first nights there. You know, I'm stressed out because yeah. this is all happening. I'm I'm doing ten years right now. You know, it's just all these different things, Coming all down. these different emotions. And now I'm in the hole for because I, I got put in a cell with somebody that had a cell phone that I had nothing to do with. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, now nah, how long I'm gonna be here for? You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm thinking how could that affect me when it's time to see parole? Like I, you know, even though it was of way course. down the line, but these are things that I'm thinking about. I'm Absolutely. like you know and I'm like my family and you know what I mean? Things like that. So while I'm sit well, I remember one night I'm laying down and I'm just like, I open my eyes, this big ass water bug flying by me. Now don't get me wrong, I grew up with that stuff, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> but still, I don't think anybody can get really accustomed to just seeing a water bug like flying right by them. You know what I'm saying? So you in a cell like, what the fuck? Yeah. So there was a there was a um there was a vent Crazy. right by the toilet. That's where they used to come from. Right. Right? So what I would do is, anytime I would get um like uh like papers, you know, like request slips or whatever, right. I would just put some toothpaste on the paper to block that vent. Okay. Because that there was nothing coming out of that vent anyway. I mean there was no air coming out of it. So I'm like, the water bugs are coming out of there. Right. So I would block that off with two and three papers. Bro. These water bugs would chew. I would see the antennas popping out of the paper because they would be chewing the paper. And I would just be like, what the hell is going on here? You know what I'm saying? So I'm just giving you that one story yeah, just to, crazy. to show you that. This is like so, that was early on into the bid. I'm only like a year into the bid. You, you know, got like nine more yeah, years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, God, man. You know, like what is going on? But, you know, I was able to come out. But then when I came out, the job that I had, now nah, I lost that job. And there was this rumors that I got caught with a big knife. It was just, it was just, it was just ridiculous. I was like, I spoke to uh, the the lieutenant that had hired me, and I was like, listen, um, can I get the job back or whatever? Because obviously they let me out of the hole. Because you do nothing. Yeah, and they 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 did the investigation. They yeah, turned like, they see up? that the investigation yeah. turned up nothing. That had nothing to do with this. Right. And they were like, oh no, you can't get the job down there anymore because, you know, we heard they had something to do with a knife. I'm like, 
you're a lieutenant. Like, how don't you know like what the truth is? Like, what do you mean you heard? Who are you hearing this? You know what I'm saying? Like, where are you getting? You heard this? I kind of said if it was like a a convict, or whatever. You know, yeah, a whole people so, talk whole stuff, whatever. They start yeah. gossiping and making things up. Of course. But you work for the institution. Like, you should be able to know. You just exactly know, like, okay, he was lo- He was, you know, he went to the hole because of an investigation because this and that. And they found that he had nothing to do with that, and they let him out. Mm-hmm. Like, and I was just like, all right, this is what it's gonna be like then. This is what time is gonna be like then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's the, just, it's so gonna, then it's what just, happened? You, you, you got out and what? You went where? So I got out and then you know, um, um, I had to wait. I think, um, I think I got a job uh, in the in the kitchen. Matter of fact, I had to get a job in the kitchen. That's where you start out at. So I had to just get a job in the kitchen. You know, just serving trays, trays, whatever. You know, helping out with 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 uh, cooking, whatever. So you did your whole you know? ten years there, Tom? No, so 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 I did. I did two and a half years there. I did two and a half years there. And then, then 2010, I wanted to put in for a transfer. And since I was there long enough and I didn't have any tickets or anything like that, you know, any, you know, my misconduct, well, I was misconduct free, whatever. Right. They were like, look, you, you're eligible to put in to go somewhere else. So I looked at the different options and Dallas and this other uh, prison, I can't think of the name of right now, but it was it was close by to Dallas. Those were the two ones that were like closest to New York. Okay. All right. So I was like, you know what? Let me go over there. And then plus, I heard, and you know, I was just only going by what dudes that I knew were telling me. They're like, yo, you want to go to Dallas because this, 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 and that, whatever. And it's uh, it's more open over there. It's an old, pr- it's an old prison. And now with Camp Hill, remember. One side of the of once one part of the prison was blues and one part was browns. So remember, like I said, when you were in blues, they gave you the blues. They treated you like shit. Right. They treated you like that purposely so you could be housebroken. Right. But those same guards, remember, they all rotate. Right. So you got a guard that's 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 you know working a blues block and he's giving them the blues and doing whatever psychologically to keep them you know in check. Now he goes to a Browns block where you got lifers and dudes that are just doing biz and they, they just want to chill. And now you got him acting all nutty on the block. And it's like, bro, you, we're not blues. Right. We're doing our time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We're good over here. So, so that kept happening. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, I don't want to keep dealing with, 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 with these different attitudes. I'd rather go to a prison where even if it's most, mostly lifers, the the COs they know how to bid too. They're like, look, you know what I'm saying. I'm coming here. I'm gonna do my job, but I'm not gonna we do gonna extra. You guys. I'm a, yeah. I'm gonna treat everybody like men. So I was like, you know what? Let me just go to Dallas, and it's a little closer. Okay. So you what? went to Dallas. So now I go to Dallas. This is uh, in June of 2010. Mm. Bro, when I got there, I was like, I have made a serious mistake. <laughs> Because when I got there, the cell was so small, and Camp Hill, where I was at, it was like it was a newer jail because there was a riot there in right. in the in the late eighties or early nineties where they burned the whole prison down, and they had to rebuild it. So they had central air. You know what I'm saying? Right. The cells were big. the The bunks were were were, were really high up. So even if you were on the on the bottom bunk, you know you could sit up without banging your head. You know what I'm saying? It was right. it was like that. Mm-hmm. But Dallas was an old prison. But when I got there, I could not believe how small this cell was that when you walk in, you have to walk in sideways. Wow. You can't walk in direct. Like You can't walk in straight. So I was just like, oh my God. Like, I just couldn't believe it. So then... Like, I'm going to uh, do the rest of these years. Yeah, so I'm, like, I'm like, nah, this can't be, man. I'm like, this can't be. So anyway, so I, I put my stuff in there. Um... I just put it on the top bunk, whatever, and I was still waiting for a few boxes that I had, that I had shipped because they they didn't come on the um they didn't come on the bus with me, so the the halftime for yard was going out, so I was like, let me just go outside. It was you know it was hot outside. I go outside, and the yard was just it was it was a, a huge yard. I mean this this had to be like probably like like at least a football field if not. Something like that. Right. It, it looked to be that big. Pretty big. Maybe it wasn't that big, but it looked to be that big. But it was separated by, by a gate. So you had to pick which side of the yard you wanted to go to. So I go to the bigger side of the yard. You know, my first time, I didn't really know. So I'm walking the yard. I'm just like, you know, looking around, whatever. And it was just so different, man. It was just like, 
I was just like really upset at myself that uh that I didn't do more homework on this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just like, you know, you're seeing a lot of uh Hey but you you what you went with the hype. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? With dudes that haven't been there in years. And you took you know their what I'm word saying? for it and now you're so in I'm that just like, small so I'm just cell. like I'm just like, damn man. So I'm outside, I'm looking, right. you know, and and I see, you know, there's a lot of uh um uh uh friendly men playing with each other out there and I'm just like Oh man, like you know what I mean? I'm just listen to each his own, right? You know what I'm saying? And you know, no, uh, no disrespect to anybody, but when I got there, and I, you know, you're seeing you're seeing things now out in the open, and I'm like, what the hell's going on out here? Like, I wanted to come to a jail that was open, but not open like that. <laughs> you right. Know what I'm saying? But anyway, so um, I wound up seeing uh, I wound up seeing uh, this this kid that I that I had known from the streets. Uh, he he had no people in my case. He's like, Yo, Tom, what's up? Blah, blah, whatever. I'm like, Nah, you know, just chilling, whatever. And and then I just started doing my time. You know, I just started figuring out. You know, so um, you start going to program. You have to take program. Well, all no, that? you know what? I didn't have to take any programs because when when you when when, I, when you do your assessment test when you go to your, like your receiving jail like when I went to Camp Hill you got to take these tests and you got to answer these different questions you know you ever did drugs you know things like that um, uh, you ever did time before whatever whatever and my scores came out really I don't know if it was really high or really low but it was something that I didn't have to take any programs. Hmm. And and that that was shocking because with drug cases they normally want you to take some sort of drug program even right. if, even if you even if you weren't using drugs they still wanted you to take it anyway right. but they didn't they didn't uh, it wasn't a part of my prescriptive programming uh, but I still took things anyway for myself right you know what I'm saying just yeah. to you know stay, you might out, as well. stay out that little cell you might as well yeah oh yeah that cell forget about it so <laughs> so so anyway so yeah so I was there for a couple of years and there was another um there was no no excuse me I was there for about a year and there was another part of the prison that was a little newer right called O Block okay and it was it was a little hard to get over there but that they have the ace, you know. They have central air there, mm. bigger cells, whatever. The bathrooms are, are community bathrooms. They're not even in the cell. Like you had to leave your cell to go use the bathroom. Private showers, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, that's I want to go there. That's where you trying to go. Yeah, that's where I want to go. So I ended up, you know, I ended up getting there though. I ended up getting there. How long it I took you before you got it there? It took. How long did it take for me to get there? I, I want to say it took about it about a year. It took about a year to get there. So you was in a year in a small cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just crazy because when when I first got to the cell where I was at, um, I was there with this um with this older with this older uh Boricua dude. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And he seemed real cool, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not into like asking anybody what their case is. I just I'm just getting here. I'm not yo. Let me see your paperwork and all of that. I know that a lot of institutions are like that, right. but. I'm just like, and that's more more so in the feds, not really like in the state like that, but true. But um, so I'm in there, you know. I'm just like, I'm, you know, I'm just doing my time, whatever. So do seem cool, point, whatever. Because it's true though, in the, in the feds, people ask you for the paperwork. Yeah. In the state, they don't really do all that. Yeah, it's 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 a little different. It's a little different. Now, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. When I was in the county, I did see people like you know immediately like they were running people off the blocks that you know that had any kind of ugly cases you know any mm. any any sexual assault cases anything against kids whatever like bro you got to check in mm. you know like that's that was immediately but when you when you in the state well I mean when I was in the state in PA there was people that had cases like that on the blocks and people didn't care. There were some people that didn't care. There were people just doing their time, and they were like, "Whatever, I don't care." Right. And there were some people that did care, and were like, "Yo, you know," and having fights with them, whatever. But so the cell that I was in, I was in there for for about uh, I want to say like two months, two or three months, and um, I was working in the infirmary, okay. and um, and uh, and one of the COs, this dude was a, was was a was a great dude, man. Great dude. Just came to do his job. That's it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Nothing extra, whatever. Like, look, you know, you're a man. You're, you know, just because you're wearing browns and I'm wearing this they doesn't mean that CEOs you're not that, a man. That, yeah, that. doesn't mean that you're just, not a man. Just, just going there to do your day job and as long as you're doing your thing, yeah. you don't care. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so um, he would get me off the block some more. You know what I mean? Like, yo, if you need an extra shift, just if you want to get off the block, because I know it'd be boring over there. You know, just to come chill, whatever. You know, you could, whatever. So, you know, I would do that, whatever. Man, 
he had told me one day, he's like, hey, listen, he's like, you know, the, the, the guy that you're in the cell with, he's like, yo, like, this guy has a really ugly case. And I'm like, yo, I got to get out that cell. You know what I'm saying? I got to get out that cell. So, so immediately when I got back to the cell, the dude felt the energy. You know what I'm saying? Because he's like, oh, what's up, Tone? What up? And I'm like, yeah, what up? You know, like it was a different, it wasn't, it was the energy a different was tone. Just, yeah, it was just different. So, <laughs> so, so uh, one That's of the crazy. CEOs on the block, one of the CEOs on the block, like he seen that I wasn't into anything, whatever. He's like, look, listen, I know that, you know, you heard or, or whatever, or that you're with this guy in there. We're going to, we're going to help you to get you out of there, man. Cause I see that you, you know, you ain't about any trouble. You doing what you got to do. And I'm sure you don't need that extra, you know, stress or whatever. And I'm right. like, yo, I appreciate it. You know? So it took like a couple of days, whatever. But then, um, um, he moved me to the top tier, uh, with, with, with somebody else that I knew over there. You okay, know what I'm saying? Cool. So, so I did that, but then I was there for a few months. Nobody ever did to that guy. Like nothing happened to him. Like I don't know if anybody ever did anything to him throughout his bid. I'm right. sure they they may have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at that point, you know, there was really nothing going on. There was um there was this dude that was on my block that he was getting searched at least three to four times a week security because. I think like 20 years prior or something like that for the case he was locked up for, he was he was um, suspected of killing some kid. Uh, and, and I think it was in New York, actually. I got Once I find out the, the name, yeah, whatever, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know who it was. But they've been, they, they've been trying to find the kid's remains or something right. and some property or whatever. So they were just constantly... Check his stuff. Check his just, Yeah, yeah. They were just constantly searching him, whatever. Wow. So I bring that up because just to say that this dude was just walking freely and it was on the news. Like They would show his thing like every year on the anniversary of the kids yeah. missing or that mm -hmm. was missing, whatever. Because mm -hmm. I think he came from like an influential family. Like right. the kid like, you know, had like his family like was known or something. So they would make sure they would put that up. They would put that dude's face on there, you know, so and so convicted for of you know, of the disappearance of whatever the kid's right. name was, and they were always searching this thing. But I say that to say is that this kid, I mean, excuse me, that, that this man would walk the yard, and you know, nothing would happen. And now, don't get me wrong, the CEOs, you know, that's one thing. The CEOs, they they would do him dirty, you know, like you know, the mail would become up missing on him. You know, what I'm saying sometimes his door wouldn't open up when it's time to go eat. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? You know, you reap what you sow. You know, I'm not. So you know. they used to do that to him. So yeah, you know, I'm sure uh, he's had other worse things happen too. But I'm just saying these were things that I've seen. You know. So then you came notice. home, right? Talking about after that, you what? So what year you came home? So I came home in 2017. Um, I went to parole. Obviously, you know, ending uh, uh 2016. Um, and uh, you know, they checked. They looked at my records. They seen you know that that I. I was doing everything I had to do. I worked um, as a, as a counselor and a lot of drug and alcohol programs. You know, so oh, well, I he helped, was there. Yeah, so I helped a lot of people while I was there. But it also helped me. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? It helped me a lot. And and I and I know you could you could relate to this when you know dealing with all the different people mm -hmm. and you start to look at internally like what you need to change instead of. You can't change the world. You got to just change yourself. So absolutely. So that really helped me a lot um, with communication, with how to talk to people. Not that I ever had a problem with talking with people, but it just it it, it made me sharper. Right. With with talking with people, especially the younger younger guys. You know, younger guys coming in, they're yeah. like, "Yo, OG, you don't understand this and that." It's like, right. trust me, I understand more than than you think I understand. You know. Right. So then you um, did that your last couple of years before you came home. Correct. Correct. Um, so and that was a good thing, man. You know, no, no, it helped. It helped, it helped a lot. You out because everybody grows. It helped. It helped. Whoever so much. you was helping, you was helping them, and you was helping yourself at the same time. You and know, that's a good thing. So you've been home now how long? So um, January will be three years. So a little over two and a half years. Okay, uh, two and a half. That's years. good, man. Give yeah. it up for Tom, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, for, thank you, know thank you, thank you. Staying thank home you. and all that positive. Yeah. So yeah. ever since, as far as um, uh, uh, what you think about jail uh, 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 reform? You know, a lot of people getting involved. Lot jail of some, reform. I you know, mean, what you got to say about that? What you think about it? I think I think that jail reform doesn't really exist right now, and I'm going to tell you why I feel that way. And I can only talk about where I've been. It was more of a, of housing people. It really wasn't more so about reforming people. There really wasn't a lot of programs to to um, 
to help guys reintegrate back into society. Where I was at, like I said, this is where I'm only speaking where I was at. Right. Um, um, they really, and even when when people come home, there's not as many opportunities or or um, programs that are that are readily available and that that are made known to these guys when they come home, so that they could you know have a better transition. Right. So mm-hmm. now, don't get me wrong. We all have the choice to do what what needs to be done, you know. So that's one thing when I was when I was inside, that I would hear guys constantly complaining about, oh, they want me to go back out there, but they they don't do this for me, they don't do that for me. I'm like, my man, you can still go to the library yourself, and you can still read a book if you want. You know what I'm saying? Right. All them calls that you're making to these girls and this and that, whatever, mm-hmm. and telling these girls to send you these pictures and that, whatever. Right. You could tell them to send you some job ap- applications or, or some 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 reading material on how to learn a different trade or whatever. Like right. you know what I'm saying? Like there's things you could do. Don't you can't just only say that there's no opportunities. You know, you you got to also take the initiative. Right. So. So, like I said, just, you know, echoing back off of the jail reform thing, I think it's just really difficult, The you know, how they're doing jail reform, where I was at. But the mentality of the, of the people that are also in prison needs to, needs to change. And right. I don't know if that needs to change from the prisons or if it needs to change with gentlemen like you and I right. talking about it and letting these guys know, like, you make this these type of decisions. Is. This was gonna happen, but then when you get in there, you ha- you still have a choice when you're in there on what to do. Right. You know exactly. So, um, you know this this is this is the reason. Oh, we got this uh the show. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a platform for you know what I mean for, for us to be able to 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 share knowledge with the youth. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, with that being said, um, um, what you think about you know shows like this? Is you think that is 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 a great thing for kids to? No, listen. This needs to be. Things like this, not only does it need to be um, on a bigger platform, because it's not only for kids. It's, you still, we still have a lot of uh, men, <laughs> the grown men that are that are not making the best decisions either. And True. unfortunately, these Good kids point. are watching those men too and thinking like, "Oh, that's the big homie. He's doing this. He's doing that." Yeah, but your big homie didn't tell you that what he's doing can get him These 10 years in jail. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, maybe your big homie didn't tell you that the reason why he's still doing what he's doing because maybe he told a bunch of people. I don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, but, um, you know, it's important. It's important. And even the right, re- even, even uh, um, regular people just to understand, man, that um, not to forget people that are, that are locked up, man, because that's, that's something that I know, you know, you definitely um have, um, my share of experience of a, a, a first hand knowledge of <laughs> you know yeah. it's like man you know those first that that first year or two whatever you know that's you see a lot of people but wow you know what I'm saying once uh, you get that sentence and you go up north or they whatever fade away. man it's like you're like socially dead man and um mm-hmm. and and that's that's another thing that can be an issue all right, man. So you're told, man. Uh, with that all being said, man, I want I want to thank you, man, for coming through, man. Most Appreciate you, man. You're my brother, man. Stay Most home. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Stay focused. What's, one more thing. What's up with y'all? What you doing? I heard you doing some music yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so uh, my partner, uh, Buddha, and I were managing uh, this artist called Wild Boy Cuba. Okay. And he has this song called Beethoven. And the song is just viral. It's all over TikTok. It's all over YouTube. It's big in Spain. It's big in Italy. It's Argentina. So, so you're doing your thing. It's big, bro. It's big. And, and I the wish Latin, you all the, the success, Latin lane, man. The Latin lane is where it's at, and that's where I'm going to be at. Listen, man. Keep doing your thing, man. I'm happy you're home and you're doing your thing. And Thank all you, that. my brother. And Thank hopefully you for that he me, fucking man. blow up and come to your show. That's right, my Thank brother. Thank you for coming Love to you. I want to first and foremost thank Tony Arnest for coming through. You know what I'm saying? Tone Patron for coming through. Uh, I mean, the story was different. I mean, you see all the trials and tribulations he went through and all that. was able to pull through all that. Um, today, he's successfully doing his thing with the music. Got his artists, you know, and doing all positive um, things and all that. Bringing back to the community, you know. And that's what it's about, man. You already know. So, with that being said, 
Thanks for tone on us. Pon Ton Patron. You already know your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard. Y'all talk. Splash. One, two. This is a step. This is a gangsters do it. Splash. Step. One, two. I'm in a whole lot of zones. Songs, they look like kaleidoscopes. I got the white for the white boy that's sniffing the shit, then he skis down the slopes. I got the can for that lady that thinks she could take it, but know that she can't. I got that work for that work that's gonna work.